Do you want to do a podcast? We make a darn good team. It always goes without a hitch. Let's head to Twitch and go start up the stream. Do you want to do a podcast? It's the Nerd Glasses Podcast. Let's start now. Hi everyone and welcome to the Nerd Glasses Podcast. Come? All right, I'll do my I'll do my own bit myself. Oh! oh wait, no silence. <laughs> We're doing it. Get off the road. So Dave, yes, Bo. Uh, it's still a little touchy around here. Like malls are open, but not everything's open. For instance, movie theaters still aren't open. And you know, a couple years ago, when people were like, "Oh, you know, you can use a virtual reality headset to look like you're sitting in a movie theater." At the time, I didn't see the appeal, but well, here we are. Your VR, okay, cool. No, I, I hi, I'm out. hi, everybody. You, I'm Butter. You committed so much to that pun. You brought a prop. You did the setup. Uh, speaking, the prop of came first. <laughs> to be fair, the prop came first. It's been sitting here in a bag in the back for uh, the Citadel's um, set. So, <laughs> speaking of setups, uh, gotta <laughs> love when. Uh, when you get this nice new stream deck, yeah, and then I program four different users into it. Yep. Have it set up. So I'm doing the store stuff for four hours. Um, and then I have it open for my set, which has uh, Sundave, Nerd Glasses, and Weekend Wednesday. Then I open OBS, where it kicks back to the last program, which is broadcasted here, which was a Dan program. So when we were about to go live, I hit the intro video for Monday night at 5 o'clock. If you're not watching... Behind the counter, the original program streaming on Insane Games TV, one that both Boder and I were originally hosts of with Dan and Mike. Yeah, you're right. missing out on a lot of news and news that you should be concerned with because it does actually pertain to when Boder and I start collecting paychecks for this <laughs> um, <laughs> immensely. Um, so I am very excited. Apologies for that snafu. I don't know how much or little of, of anything you guys saw or what you saw. I'm going to rewatch back what happened. Um, so maybe that'll become part it of the intro. It might be like multiple different... <laughs> <laughs> just us panicking, like, red alert! Ah! <laughs> because I don't... I, I have. We now know what happens if you, we are live on Insane Games TV on one set of, of screens. Because Tom... Uh, it's his birthday, by the way, tomorrow. So preemptively, happy birthday, Tom. And retroactively, happy birthday, Steph. Um, <laughs> but um, uh, much love to you. Um, yeah, we'll be interested to see how all of this works out after we uh, shuffle the deck with all of Tom's work. But we now know if I'm live on one program and I click to go to a different screen on a different program, the stream stays up. And it does it. And then you can bring it right back, which was awesome. Because I was really worried that you guys were going to watch the countdown, and then it was going to get to zero. You were going to start, you were going to click that button, and then it was going to go, we're offline. offline. Like, <laughs> canceled. <laughs> this is, wait, this is Insane Games TV, not Fox. Um, <laughs> so. Wow, okay. We are, we are, uh, uh, both, both Boater and I always look forward to Tuesday evenings to share with you guys, and thank you yeah. to literally everybody yeah, um, uh, who's been in chat hyping it up for the last ten minutes? Laddie, more like rigor mortis, face slap eighty nine, demon dragon. Thank you guys so much for popping in tonight. Uh, yeah, we've got we've got a lot to cover. We have a couple follow ups first. So, Dave, do you want to take your yes. big follow up? So he has been <laughs> giggling. What during the countdown? He keeps finding new things for this follow up. He's like, oh. <laughs> so I originally giggling, cackling. I originally had oh, it's both. It was both. Um, <laughs> It, it started off as giggling. What's going on, Anti Cause Prime? That stream, by the way, Anti today. Mwah. Um, I was at work, but then I came here and I had it up on the on the screen. Um, excellent, sir, uh, and thank you for your streaming. 
Um, follow anti class Prime. Um, sorry. Um, so. Yes, face slap, use an oof. A command that I made. Um, so, I got to notice that Epic Games was doing more of the stuff that Epic Games has been trying to do recently. Really quick recap. Epic yes. says we're going to charge uh, within Fortnite itself rather than going through the App Store. Apple says no. Apple says, in fact, after your Unreal Engine as well. And then Court says not so fast with that. But um, a whole lot of... Uh, and Court being like, yeah, Apple, uh, Epic talks about this being precipitous, but they were the ones that walked to the ledge... Um, I mean, they, and they were the ones that wantonly looked at their terms of service and went, what are they going to do? Call us on it? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and so, like, Epic tries to weaponize their fan base and saying that Apple is being monopolistic uh, when it's really just that Epic didn't obey the terms of service in their contract, whatever. And not fantastic job, uh, Epic's fan base, for not falling for... <laughs> get it? Get you. <laughs> Look what we're doing over here! Like, <laughs> I'm sorry, so. boy. Our, uh, uh, a couple of weeks ago, Judge Gonzalez Rogers looked Epic across the, across the, the, the field and went, that's, that's what you're saying in my court? No, no, no. Come back with something better. So Epic <laughs> did come back with something. Um, it is not oh, officially God. in court, but they are filing an injunction to have Apple reinstate Fortnite because... And here's the... F Remember, they wantonly violated the Apple Terms of Service knowing that this could have been a problem. Mm -hmm. Out of 350 million registered users on Fortnite right now, more than 116 million of them are only iOS. So roughly one third? A third of their player base is only on iPhones and tablets. And the... They have announced officially that since Apple uh, has removed the game, if you still had it, they didn't take it off your devices. Yep. yep. 60% of a third of their player yeah, yeah. base is no longer playing the game. Um, and so, uh, my, there are many uh, quotes that apply to this, many phrases as far as like, what did you think was going to happen? Way to shoot yourself in the foot. I just like. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Yep. That is that is exactly what that is. I don't know why you would you would look down at the prize table at the end there, and instead of making a great Avengers crossover and all the things that they are doing, they would instead turn around and shoot the person who works for the Lions oh, Club oh. that owns the carnival that they're working at. Why? Why, Epic Games? Dave, Dave, we're going to recreate a meme. <laughs> Epic, one-third of player base. Why would Apple do this? <laughs> I just... I just... I just... Exactly. I'm glad... I'm so glad that, that everybody... Demon Dragon and Anti especially are, are seeing... Just the fact that the second I saw that, I was like... Oh no! And then they actually had to like go into information. Um, oh my god! Um, I, I love that they're like, oh wow, we're we're losing a lot of players over this. We can't have that. It's Apple that's making it do it. So file a court injunction. Uh, no. Sorry, I'm gonna watch the replay coming up on my phone now. The meme recreation. So I I absolutely love that. Um, something, <laughs> something that I am a little bit worried about is, you know how we were talking last week about, uh, what was it? 1980, the 1984, the 1984 um, video yep. about information being withheld from people and things like that. <laughs> the country of India is, uh, playing, playing hardball with their digital allowances in gaming, that's why I'm bringing this up. Okay, okay, okay. Um, they have removed 118 apps from access in their country. Okay. One of them is PUBG Mobile. They had 175 million citizens playing that game. Okay. A lot of them also made their living off of playing PUBG. Okay. Um, competitively which they are not allowed to now do within the country, and citizens are explicitly banned from 
participating in the tournaments um, in an official capacity representing India in any way. Okay. Um, they have also ruled out uh, uh, the app TikTok and a couple of others. So India is um, going in a, a direction that is is cons- well could be construed as very dark and. I am hoping for all the pro gamers that are in India who did make their living off of these mobile apps and things like that because there are people that live off of mobile apps, which is, you know, if you've made that that golden goose, like, by God. Um, More information on that as it becomes available. But just so everyone knows, interesting things and and gaming is still under fire a la uh, uh, the 90s in the U.S. when... Mortal Kombat became a home game, yeah, and people yeah. were like, Mah! Yeah. Um, I'm still going to buy it for my children, but how dare my children play such filth? Like, <laughs> yeah, so um, uh, the things being banned, like, is it is it because of, like, a moral outrage kind of thing, or is it, it like, foreign influence kind of thing? Like, it, what are what's some of the reasoning? It does appear to exclusively be foreign influence as it pertains to China. Their, okay. their neighbor in the north. Um, okay. But... You say TikTok, and that one's a little obvious at this point. Um, yeah. PUBG, is that something that's, like, partially owned by Tencent or something because fucking everything is? Um, I have a feeling PUBG Mobile will, uh, is, is something to you. Will someone think of the children? One day, Boulder and I will do a retrospective on, on video games in court in, uh, in the U.S. because... By God, was it adorable in retrospect. <laughs> um, but yeah, it looks like India is attempting to vet uh, 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 such influences yeah. from other countries. And just as a history lesson and a brief overview, it's something that's happened a lot to India. So... yeah. <laughs> Um, okay, so um, is this making space for Indian game developers? Is this trying to make room for homegrown game development? Asks more like rigor mortis. It does not seem like it, just because they do have... Currently out of India, there are not many well-known game and app developers mm-hmm. that go to a global market. Yes, um, but maybe like within its domestic market, and more like Greg Mortis says, maybe they're not doing it on purpose, but um, accidentally perhaps. If these big battle royale games with Chinese influence end up getting yes. taken off of the marketplace, that leaves room for um, Indian developers to then make a homegrown battle royale game to fill that spot. This ban occurred less than six days ago, so it is my hope that some industrious team in a garage are already on this, mm-hmm. or or already had an existing game that can then yeah. just that get a little bit of love. Of players, yeah. Um, if there's any, if we've learned anything about gamers, is we're resilient. We're also very loud, and we refuse to go away. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and we are fickle with our loyalties. Oh no! Epic. <laughs> oh, oh no! It appears that I cannot play Fortnite on my iPhone. Oh. <laughs> what do you mean I'm not getting the new content on uh, on Fortnite? Not playing it. What do you mean my Minecraft server is not like the ones on PC? First of all, why would you buy Minecraft on a console and expect you're gonna get that treatment? But you know, you know, you know. To each their own. Don't play Team Fortress Two on the Xbox 360, please. That's all I'm asking. <laughs> Uh, okay, so uh, let's. Uh, I so we've spun our wheel of developer shame, and you know lately the wheel has been about half epic, um, but there's still a sizable wedge of EA in there. So <laughs> EA, uh, you're back in the hot seat. Um, <laughs> so Dave, advertising in games. Um, first off, in, yeah. a, in a mobile game, what do you? Like, what do you see is acceptable for advertising in a mobile game? For me, if it's free, in between each level, um, and then either banner ads that I can click X that come up during non-quick uh, timing moments, yeah. or um, having 
like just characters wearing ads for things. Okay. Or having like the game developer put in text that's like, oh yeah, I do so love my ten cent. And I have such a great time working for ten cent. Yeah. Like <laughs> Um and now what do you feel is acceptable advertising in games that you pay like home console games that you pay forty, sixty bucks for? I've liked how uh, uh, Kojima does it in his games, which is... Product placement. Product placements. Uh, they're spectacular. Saratoga Natural Spring Water. Sponsor Insane Games TV. Mm. Um, I also, you know, build, like, uh, um, you know, uh, billboards in in games and things like that. Yep. Um, um, uh, stuff in arenas and sports games. Yes. Or yep. or even, like, as the game, the EA Sports. And before that, having never times for, like, how's hot dogs? Like, like, have a wiener! Like, <laughs> um, so, I guess uh, 2K has kind of done that for a while, where between levels, you know, uh, in the middle of a game, they will display an ad as though yes. it's an ad break, uh, televised. I guess they've kind of gotten away with it, or at least they've said, we don't care enough, we're not going to change it. Yeah. Meanwhile, EA does that and enabled that in UFC 4, um, so that when it cut to the instant replay cam it would show a quick advertisement for, say, The Boys on Amazon Prime, uh, season two out or something like that. Um, unskippable stuff that took up time before it went to a replay. Um, and EA's user base, I'm not going to say they're better, I'm not going to say they're worse than 2Ks, but they are certainly more numerous. And numbers bring volume, especially on Reddit. Um, and within about a day, EA said, whoops, we're going to walk that back. <laughs> we're going we're gonna... to... That feature was not yet ready to roll out, or we have listened carefully to the concerns of our players. Of course they haven't. Oh, God. I love... That's how... This... That's, that's exactly how we got surprise mechanics, which is my favorite thing to say uh, uh, over any game. <laughs> it's up there. Oh, God! It's, it's, it's right up there with, uh, what was it? 599 US dollars. Um, <laughs> my body is ready. Oh, um, God. And you have phones, don't you? Oh, that one... That one was my favorite, and I I like in, in now now months removed from the horror that was that BlizzCon, um, years. I I am very glad that to be honest that definitely wasn't a PR fluff thing. That was someone standing in front of a very angry audience, having left a very angry executive room, being like, "Well, I have to stand in front of this," and so here we go. <laughs> Roll what you say. <laughs> That's a seven, buddy. You have phones, don't you? Oh, Fuck. Or, or just even, or even looking at looking at the table. The roulette's already spinning, and just going. You know what? Double my bet on it. Like, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, congratulations, EA, for um, saying Holy this small shit. developer's been doing this for years. Let's get in on that. Oh God, no. <laughs> I and good. And I would say good on them for walking back. Except that, like, you don't get points. For letting go of the electric fence. You walked up to it and grabbed on. Um, let's see. Activision? Uh, what are the other big companies we haven't been saying this about recently? Uh, uh, who haven't... So, uh, Epic definitely uh, went to go shoot off a pinky toe for some reason and wound up taking the whole foot. Yep. Um... EA indefinitely with with Madden 21, by the way, the vile icker that that game has been getting. Um, they also blew off a foot. Um, I, it hold seems on, hold like on, hold on. Uh, what's can we can we what is what's going on with Madden 21? I have no idea. Oh well, so Boner, you know how every year uh, uh, sports have a new season. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. and rosters get yeah, updated yeah. and things like that. So. Every year, uh, EA, who got the exclusive license for uh, 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 the NFL, um, rolls out a new game. Yep. This year, uh, uh, Madden 21 is literally and provably a roster update and then a whole bunch of coding bugs. 
and nothing else. So in other words, they made they're, no gameplay yeah. changes from the previous year. Nothing. It crashes a lot more, and it has some different names and faces. Yep. Good job. Um, it's it's absolutely EA has they have they have fucked it. They have fucked it so hard <laughs> that I don't know that be. Unfortunately for 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 us as if you are a fan as I am of playing Madden, um, they NFL already doubled down and extended that contract. So there's yeah. no way 2K is getting the Madden franchise. But I noticed that uh, NFL did make a deal with 2K not that long ago. We reported that on a couple episodes. Check out the VODs on uh, yeah. Insane Games TV YouTube. Well, did you say VOD? Yes. What? VOD or VOD? What do you... Uh, okay, whatever. Um, it's, 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 do you, I do learned you it from it, you! Do you call <laughs> Imperial Walkers at-ats? What? Imperial Walkers in The Empire Strikes Back. Yeah. at at or at-at? Depends. Mm, still depends. wrong. Although, although, GIF, at me, you suckers. GIF. 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 <laughs> I would shake your hand in agreement that now and we would move forward. Just visualize that we've shaken hands and moving forward. Um, so, you know, it is what it is and it's how it's going to be. So Activision and, and byproduct Blizzard. Yep. Uh, Ubisoft. Ubisoft. Um, you know what? Let's throw LucasArts, Disney. Um, yeah, LucasArts, a 2K. production thing that hasn't been around for... A decade, and and a bunch of these other these other big companies, just just read read what's been happening and don't do. None of them have made money from these things, except for EA. They, don't read they, into that. <laughs> uh, okay, going back through really quick, more like Rick and Mortis. Thank you so much for your third month of subscribing right here at Insane Games TV. It means so much to us. Thank Enjoy you so much. your uh, 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 mic face and yep. please use it wantonly. Uh, <laughs> Andy Klaus Prime, still remember Battlefield 2142 being one of the first with billboard ads. Uh, I remember playing uh, during Citadel Homefront yep. where there was just like the massive ads and like the energy drink vending machines and the Tiger Direct store you fight through. Um, yeah. Uh, how do you pronounce K2SO? It's pronounced in the movie, so that's just that's there. That's that's how it's pronounced. Uh, <laughs> okay, so uh, another sort of follow up. Last week, Dave, we talked about a Burger King advertising firm going to random Twitch channels, usually smaller ones, small to medium Twitch channels, yeah, and donating five bucks and saying, "Hey, great stream. Yeah, use this to buy a flame broiled Whopper meal." Um. Whatever. Uh, and basically running a follow of like, hey, you are using my um, my community to further your own whatever. It could yeah. go against sponsorship deals. It's just morally scummy. We talked about this last week. Um, someone said K2SO to me and I got confused. Mm, they're just wrong. Um, <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, so... There is a way to uh, for someone big to donate to someone small and to do so in a way that is heartwarming. Yes. Um, Jack Septicai, a uh, wonderful YouTuber, put out a video um, at the end of last week. He said, I'm having an awful day. I'm going to make it better by going and watching some Twitch streams and donating to smaller streamers. Here's a guy with eight viewers playing... Um, uh, I forget what it's called, like Rise of Rain or something like that. He's like, oh, I was just playing this. A hundred bucks. Um, here's another small streamer, a hundred bucks. Uh, here's here's a, uh, this guy that's just like drumming along to stuff that he hasn't heard before. Three hundred bucks. Um, and then, oh, hey, you're 40 subs away from your sub goal. Gifts 40 subs. Nice. And like making the day of so many people. People who are like, was that a typo? Did you mean to just donate 40 and not 400? Or... Uh, stuff like that, like the joy on the face of smaller streamers, uh, like they basically uh, some of them are like at around your level of streamer, where you're streaming multiple days a week. You have a, a small dedicated community. If a big name YouTuber came in and was just like, "I appreciate what you're doing. Uh, here's a song request. Five hundred bucks." Yeah. Yeah, like it was really cool. Like, and he made a video of it, which is also cool because it takes his millions of subscribers on YouTube and says, hey, here's some really cool Twitch channels. 
like that guy that was um, that was drumming had a really cool setup. I'm like, I gotta, I gotta follow him on Twitch now. Yeah, that was really cool. Um, and they're probably seeing a community boost from it. That is a positive way that someone big can make donations to someone small, and it's yes. not it's not just about the money. Um, and that way, it's about like a a amount of money that matters. Not to say that a five dollar donation doesn't matter. But when you're earmarking it for me for a Whopper, <clears throat> um, you know, it's an well, amount that matters. And, again, he put out his video of doing this, um, thereby exposing these smaller Twitch creators to um, a really large audience, which was yes. also really cool. It, it also comes from a different route of when, when you and I talk about streamers that we watch and streamers that we like, it hits very differently than uh, when you're watching a banner ad before... Your, the streams that you like to watch mm -hmm. starts and it has big name streamer and then y like little streamers that are in this official like you know what I mean like professionally made blah 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 yeah, like yeah, yeah. hoopla it, it really does get down to the idea of wow I feel the passion I feel the niceness there and that is awesome um, that they that 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 Jacksepticeye did that mm -hmm. um and uh, it's nice to see... And he probably spent more on it than, than that Burger King advertising company did, too. Oh, infinitely more. Because, um, because there was a couple of 500 donations, there was all the subs, there was, like... You know, if, I, if uh, Burger King goes around and gives 5 bucks to 200 people, uh, 1000 bucks right there, exactly. he did more than that in just the one video, because he's like, I have been super fortunate in my life, and what people allow me to do, let me pay it forward. Yes. Um, we've been having, uh, to, to branch off of that actually, we've uh, been having uh, uh, the Garnted Cult, my community on DAM314, has been having a lot of successes and congratulations to the newest Twitch affiliate, Kayo6668. Yep. Um, congratulations on your work, on, on getting that, and nothing but uh, hope for you to continue to grow and continue to succeed, man. And uh, to all my community and things like that, let's keep crushing it. Um, yeah. Um, I did drop a link to that Jacksepticeye video in chat there. Nice. If people want to follow that. It was It's a really like wholesome watch. Hell yeah. Uh, so that polishes off my topics for the day. <laughs> so, I have got one uh, other big named corporation. And then we've got a whole bunch of fun uh, uh, video game news. Yes. Because when this podcast started, it was post-holiday season. Uh, it was like we had an episode or two in December, but that's after like exactly. the big Once release. Once you're in times, December, yeah. though, it's post holiday season. Like, like yeah, I mean, <laughs> like the Easter decorations are out, but come on. So, um, we're now going to be getting into the pre holiday season for a lot of these games. So I'm very excited to get to talk about some console releases and things like that. But a company that I mentioned on last week's stream and on a couple programs before. WWE, multi-million dollar corporation, has lots of independent contractors mm. as performers. Yep. Um, they have been keeping all of them very safe. And, and WWE is a corporation, by the way, because I look deeply into it, have been doing a fantastic job keeping their employees safe and paid during the COVID uh, outbreak and things like that. Yep. But this goes about the fact that the company is run by a now in his late 70s, early 80s, man and everything in the company including the di weekly television broadcast get, he gets the final say on yep well someone brought his attention that all of his employees are on cameo and twitch oh, and God, youtube I saw this. and these things and vince being an old man and not really knowing what any of those things were went well how they're not allowed to do that anymore because i don't understand what that is yeah! But, um, well, like Rigor Mortis, I will have more on the PS5 for next week. We're going to be talking the Series X, or Series S, as it was announced recently. Um, so, but I wanted to f uh, finish up with, so, yeah, so like WWE last week announced to all their employees, listen here, you can't have a cameos, you gotta stop doing twitching, that's not good for your muscles. And whatever the hell a, a tube of you is, not allowed in my company. For those of you who are unaware, Cameo is a really cool platform where if you are a celebrity, you basically 
um, accept commissions to do short videos just straight from your phone. Yes. I saw a really good one this past week where um, in a video intro to his class, this, uh, this professor comes down the stairs in a suit and says, I'm Dr. Benny, uh, and I'm going, uh, I'm going to pass it over to my friend uh, who's going to tell you how important the syllabus is, and then cue a cameo from Snoop Dogg saying, yo, syllabus, got to read it. Um, and it's like, you know, I don't, I don't know how much a Snoop Dogg cameo is. Like, some voice actors are like 25 bucks, some actors are like 300 bucks, whatever, but it's like your personality and you, you know, more or less commission a short message that you can send to someone for like a birthday or something like that. Um, and a lot of um, celebrities have kind of been using that. Not that they need a stopgap of money, whatever, but it's a way to stay occupied during the pandemic yes. and a way to be connected to fans. Um, so um, WWE made that edict it, and it went through the internet like wildfire because uh, the old adage is telephone, tele, tele uh, Graham, tele wrestler. And then everyone will find out about it. Um, and so yesterday, uh, before Monday Night Raw, WWE's employees were sat down uh, and Vince was brought into the room and they were explained that you can have a cameo, you can have a Twitch, actually, you can have a Twitch, you can have a YouTube, you can have a freestyle. They can't have cameos because... WWE as a corporation is going to be doing their own version of it. They rolled it out last. They rolled it out last time. Oh, we can't. We can't pot call on the kettle black though. Apple can call. Can take all the money they want. WWE is just making sure that they are having their current employees doing these things. So what it was was during pay per view buildups and things like that. Um, people could buy X amount of minutes of live interaction with their favorite WWE star. So WWE... That's not what a cameo is. It is not, yeah. but it is that WWE is realizing that market-wise, uh, if they can get a video of Roman Reigns saying, it was a WWE star, by the way, um, saying, happy birthday, Kenny, ha ha ha! Why are they going to shell out to buy a two-minute live session with him if they are, like... The, yeah. the price difference so and, and it's when it first hit it was another thing that hit in that like all the wrestlers are subcontractors yep. even though like yes they, they are their names and images and whatever are owned and controlled by wwe they are still not full employees they are subcontractors yes and that is something that wwe annually gets sued about and annually yep. that court case seems to just disappear which is very strange because it's not right that wwe employees mm -hmm. are considered contractors however they did announce that you can, in fact, use all these other social medias, but if it is not a WWE product, you cannot use your WWE-owned and given gimmick name. Yes. It's the same idea of Boater and I are not going to go on my Twitch channel or Boater's YouTube and make Nerd Glasses episodes that are not affiliated with Insane Games TV because mm. that name is affiliated with them. If we do a podcast in the future of Boater and I sitting on the back porch with Ronan and Katusha, it'll be called Ronan and Katusha's Torch or something. Yeah, yeah. Um, the idea is that WWE wants to protect its... Um, it's, it's IP, its characters. Yes. Um, and anything that its characters do, they want to be making the money directly, not the people who play the characters. And they also want to make sure that their employees aren't getting nice and liquored up and saying stupid things on the internet. Um, under the WWE yeah, banner. Probably the, the official WWE one has a handler in the room or something when it happens. So I mean, they surprisingly, they let their employees that they do have the green light for get away with a lot of things. If you want an example of that, YouTube Up, Up, Down, Down. It's a channel where the performers are it, backstage at WWE events doing shenanigans and chicanery. But, um, yeah. Um... I'm glad the WWE clarified because before that it just seemed like curmudgeon old man screaming at clouds and doesn't understand. Now it's just curmudgeon old businessman that yeah. doesn't want other people wants to wants to pinch his pennies. Oh but yes. like if the direct monetary oh, oh pinch his in bundles. It. There's no pennies in WWE for their transactions. Um, uh, okay, let's talk. Let's talk releases. And you said we're not going to talk about uh, PS5 today, but because uh, there really isn't any more news about the PS5 okay. other than the fact that backwards compatible, outside of PS4 discs being put in the PS5, is pretty much non-existent. So, 
we are now going to transition over to um, Nerd Vision, and we're going to throw it on. Nerd Vision engaged. <laughs> to an advertisement. Okay, that I should actually be able to watch. Microsoft actually had to do of their own because it got leaked. And so they had to stay ahead of the story. And so here we are watching this. We're not going to have sound, but um, here's the announcement they made. I'm going to put it just like a one or two. Oh. Ooh. Ah. With white paint. It's like the original Xbox 360 release. Remember, like, the beginning of that generation where white was the future? Yeah. We, Xbox 360, only the PlayStation stayed with the, the black coloration. Although the PS2 Slim had the silver one. Okay. What? Why? <laughs> so it's a smaller version of the Xbox Series X. Which isn't out yet. Yep. Microsoft, you're supposed to wait three or four years before releasing re releasing your small version. So is so what? What is the difference in hardware specs of the S from the X? Ah. So does it have no disk drive? It does not have a disk drive. Microsoft has finally been able to make a mainstay console sends a disk drive. They wanted to do it for the Xbox One originally. There and was rumors flying about that, but boy, wasn't did ready. you not see? Boy, how did you see the internet blow <laughs> crap? To, uh, to be fair, <laughs> um, like internet connectivity wasn't there yet. No, it um, really wasn't. <laughs> and in some places, it's still not. Broadband doesn't reach. Um, quite as many people as yep. they wanted to. Um, what is the price differential for the S versus the X? Have we gotten prices on any of these yet? So the Series S concretely announced two ninety nine. Not bad. Not bad at all. Um, are the actual like graphics processing whatever the same as the X? Um, it does seem like it. Okay. Um. However, like if it's the same, if it's not a slightly nerfed version, if it's the same, three hundred isn't bad. I gotta say though, actually, there's the pro there's some of the differences. Four K upscaling, so it's not natural four K. It is it is upscaling four K. Um, that might be games that are going in four K can be upscaled to four K. That is very true. Um, I did see fourteen forty p at one hundred twenty frames a second. My guess is that it might be doing like four K at sixty. Um, so, hold on. I'm going to see if I can find tech specs comparing the two. Dave, Demon Dragon, else? it looks like cheap speaker standing up like that. Um, you go ahead so and... they had talking. to... Uh, the Series X will reportedly be four ninety nine. by the way. Okay. Um, okay. And so, an additional have... 200 for disk drive, and I will see what else we can find that is different. So, this, this announcement, by the way, came off the back that... Uh, some folks on got their hands on that press that video and released it immediately. Uh, so Microsoft, who were not ready to yet announce, uh, they were probably going to wait for a bigger occasion to make a bigger deal of it, uh, had to officially acknowledge that it was true and it was in fact. So they put all those cool graphics on it and all these other things. Um, oh, this. This Series X is going to be discontinued in a year. I'm calling it now. I'm looking at the spec difference. Um, I'm trying to see if I can just get it in like a handy chart. But um, let's see here. There's the price difference. Um, okay. Um, graphics. Um, the GPU in the Series X will be 12 teraflops. Only 4 in the Series S. I don't know what really... Aside from number comparison, I don't know the practical application of teraflops, but three times as much in the Series X. Um, 
the processor seems to be the same. Um, there will be 16 gigs of GDDR6 RAM in the Series X, only 10 gigabytes in the Series S. Um, and the Series S will have a 512 gigabyte um, drive as opposed to the Series X having a double sized one terabyte drive. Yes. Um, performance, uh, 4K at 60 frames a second um, or up to 120 frames a second. I don't know why it's giving us different things. Um, maybe, oh, variable frame rate, I saw that being a thing. So, but steady running 4K at 60 frames per second for the Series X, only 1440p which is like 2.7K for the Series S. So the Series S has a lot weaker stats. Um, and I think that that's going to be like the budget version that you get out the gate. Um, but it is probably going to be continued within a year, um, maybe two, as a Series XS, which will be about the same size, but with the actual specs of the Series X gets yeah. released. It'll be really interesting to see what that looks like and, and which people retail-wise go for. Are, are they going to, you know... Well, it depends on people in your position. And I say his position. I don't work behind the counter right now. Um, but it depends on people like you being educated and saying, so here's the Series S. Mm -hmm. It is $200 cheaper. It cannot play games off a of disc. It can only play games to be downloaded. It has a smaller hard drive, so it can download less. It does not have uh -huh. as much graphical capacity. Yep. If you have a 4K television, it is not going to be as good as the Xbox Series X. It is basically a stepping stone from the Xbox One X. Mm -hmm. I am so mad at Xbox for these naming schemes. Oh, my God. That was the other conversation uh, Dan and I had earlier today, which is... Thanks, Xbox, for naming your console, previous generation, The One. Because, you know, when people come in and they go, I need an Xbox One, and then it goes into the idea of which Star Wars film do you think is one? Is it four, the first one that ever came out, or are you talking about episode one? Are you asking for the Xbox One, the console that came out or not too many years ago, Xbox. or the original Xbox that was literally the best home defense device because if you hucked that fucking radiator at somebody, not only were you not going to lose your Halo save, but no one was ever going to break in again. I've used it as a doorstop. I've definitely used a, uh, a busted original Xbox as a doorstop before. Oh, yeah. Those thing, that um, thing is the most versatile damn console. The, the video <laughs> on my channel where we took a bunch of stuff um, and just took it under a sledgehammer because they were defective consoles, the Xboxes were the hardest to break. With a sledgehammer, full break, you'd get a little dent. Spoiler alert, the Xbox no longer the tankity tank of consoles. I mean, PlayStation did not step up to take that place, and the Switch did not either. Um, <laughs> thank you, PC Gaming, for making your things more versatile, more able to be things, and thank you, Tom, for making the Kraken not suck. Um, you, you just say that because you are still new to seeing PC Gaming. Back when the original Xbox came out, PC Gaming was still you know the tank as far as like specs and stuff. I'm just saying that thing's beefy and can hurt someone. As were, you know... Turn. Here's the thing about turn of the century PCs and going to LAN parties, is that if you brought your PC, the case would be about the same as it is today. That's, that's what I was referencing. But thank you. No, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> Here's the difference. Back in the day, although the case was about the same, you know what you'd have to bring for a display? Here's a hint. It yep. weighed 40 fucking pounds. Exactly. Yeet! And you could yeet them down the stairs to get them down there for the LAN party. Um. Oh, no, a CRT would break so fast. I, uh, yeah. Um, wow. Um, <laughs> Sorry, we went on, like, three different tangents there. Hey, Microsoft, <laughs> name your shit better, and the, I'm, I, I've historically been wrong, but I want to believe that the Series S will be discontinued within 12 months uh, for lack of uptake. I mean, the, the Xbox One X was discontinued almost as quickly as it was out, so... <laughs> So, what what else what else has been announced recently? Is it games uh, or there have been so many games announced and it's so exciting to see all of these titles getting announced. And the good news is there's not too much information on them, but voter, you're going to you're going to need to 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 hold on to your seat right now because you are going to get absolutely blown away because Super Mario is uh, is joining an elite class of exclusive games that have only been out 
for a very short time. That's right, baby. Mario is putting on the Battle Royale and getting in that ring. He's joining Bomberman and PUBG and Call of Duty and Battle Royale games everywhere. It's going to be called Super Mario 35 Battle Royale. You're going to be playing against 35 other players and you're going to be running across the map as quick as you can. And once you win, then some other variables come into stock where, where enemies spawn for other people. And it's going to be the best thing Nintendo's getting into the Battle Royale with Mario. You're making me sad. I know, but the good news is off of the back of that announcement that Super Mario 35 Battle Royale was coming out on September 18th, which, by the way, is 10 days from now, a game is coming out for the Switch. A game clamored for that has features that were clamored for for now. Well, since I've owned my Wii U, goddammit. Animal Crossing um, Battle Royale. Super Mario... Th don't say that out loud. You'll breathe it into existence. Um, Super Mario 3D All-Stars. A compilation game that's going to be released for the Switch that is going to feature Super Mario 64, Super Mario Sunshine, and Super Mario Galaxy. I am so excited for that game. Um... And ironically enough, COVID was the reason we didn't get more hype about this game earlier. Because in the Super Mario Maker 2 events, there was supposed to be a teaser event called uh, Super Mario 35 uh, um, Automated Run, which was going to be live from the 14th to the 21st of April, but was taken down um, because it couldn't be officially announced um, in the way that Nintendo would have wanted it to. Mm -hmm. Very, very excited um, that this title is going to be coming out. By the way, folks, if you are a fan of those games and you think that's good, I beg of you, pre-order it now, because Nintendo is not... They have announced they are not going to be making that game for the entire rest of the life of the Switch. And also, Nintendo does not make enough copies for retail demand. Yeah, they're very bad at that. So pre-order it, get it, get your name on a copy. Absolutely, get get your sixty dollars. By the way, it's a full game on the on the Dan Dan scale. Because Nintendo um, might run out of zeros and ones. Exactly. Um, Thanks, Andy. Very very excited for that one. Um, and now that I have hurt Boater's feelings, talking about Super Mario Thirty Five Battle Royale. I will talk about something that next month... So here's the thing, is that I'm interested in seeing other games get into Battle Royale, but more than that, I want to see different genres of Battle Royale. All we've seen has mostly been first-person shooters. Yes. Now, there's Fall Guys, which builds itself as a Battle Royale, but because of its structure, I don't really buy it. It's it's an elimination tournament. Yep. Um, but, like, I would love to see a Flight Sim Battle Royale. Um, you yeah. know, that, you know, you pick up weapon power-ups uh, through an asteroid field and shoot each other down. I want to see something other than a first or third person shooter. Um, and so a platformer battle royale, like if, if Mario does it with like Mario 64 style platforming, then I would be interested to see how it does. But if it's just, hey, we're going to give um, Splatoon squirt guns to Mario and friends as they run around a big open field with some buildings in it, I'm not interested. It is, in fact, going to be a platformer battle royale. Okay. With 35 players, and then at in between rounds, what they're actually going to do is adjust who gets... Uh, so, you know when you're, you start the first level and that little Goomba starts moving across the field for you? Okay. They're going uh, to be putting yep, in yep. balancers where one player may not get that Goomba. Someone else, else might. Someone else might get a big Goomba. Someone else might get the other things. Um, so this will be an interesting take on it. I'm excited, and I will be streaming it. Um, um, Andy Claus says Spellbreak seems to be the most interesting game in the battle royale genre. I've seen stuff for Spellbreak. I think I got as far as trying to sign up for the beta, and then like didn't get in. Uh, but then it fell off my radar again. Um, Spellbreak is a kind of fantasy themed battle royale with magic and stuff like that which you know differs a lot from the shooty gunman yes um tetris battle royale just stop it <laughs> andy claus prime you brought up some good points you can stop talking now <laughs> never stop talking never um stop, never stop so talking. 
Um, I do want to look into our crystal microphone. And uh, someone named Jeff Grubb, an industry insider, Wait. has predicted something. Je hold on. Jeff or Jeff? Uh, you said, because it sounded like you said Jeff Grubb. Well, like with the mask, past, it is, like, it like is a little bit name, hard. His name is the past tense of Jeff. <laughs> He's Jeff. No, it was Jeff Grubb. Jeff Grubb, okay. Um, industry insider for, for video games, gives to games journalism, things like that. Right! If he's trying to predict, he would be future tense Jeff. So. So what did Will Jeff he say? He is predicting that sometime in October, we will be getting a game with a $60 price tag. It's getting a little bit clearer. Ooh, I'm seeing a remaster. Oh, and it looks like it's a franchise that will literally drag Boater into the next gen consoles. Mass Effect. Um, there's been predictions of a Mass Effect trilogy remaster for a while. Yes, which is why we're looking into our crystal ball. If um, we're right, this episode, earmark it. And is, so is that something that would be planned for next gen? Um, to bring that to, um, because Mass Effect 1, 1 2, and 3 came out on the previous generation. Mm -hmm. PS3, yep. uh, Xbox 360. And frankly, I don't think the games need a remaster every single generation. I'm looking at you, Skyrim! Um, or three times a generation, um, but uh, yeah, I would I would kind of be down for a Mass Effect trilogy remaster on Xbox One. Um, my the interesting thing is what would they change in the games because they can change things when they remaster something. As much as Tony Hawk Pro Skater was a faithful adaptation, there are things that they changed. Yes. Um, and so. Mass Effect 1 is very much an RPG with guns. Also an illegible RPG, depending on what TV you're playing on. Uh, yep. Uh, and Mass Effect 2 and 3 um, are very much cover-based shooters with RPG elements. Um, and I wonder if they're going to do an overhaul of 1 to bring it more in line with the second two. Which would have a lot of people upset, but not me. Because when I went back to play Mass Effect 1... Just before Mass Effect 3 came out, I was like, I'm going to play through 1 and 2. And I went back to 1, and I was like, this is awful. I'm just going to play 2 again. So, there is, unfortunately, oh, it looks like the crystal ball. Oh, uh, it's gotten hazy now. I can't, I, there's no other information based upon those things. But if we see an announcement, prepare for Giddy Boater. Um, well, depending on what to they announce. To be fair, though. because the Mass Effects are backwards compatible, I don't, I don't get super excited for remasters. If I can still play the game on a current-gen console, I don't particularly care if there's a remaster. And because of Microsoft's push for backwards compatibility, I have every expectation that I'm going to be able to play my current Mass Effect games and importing my current saves into it just fine. Oh, I'm getting a vision on my crystal ball again. Oh, it looks like Dave is going to have a customer screaming at him. Ooh, they bought a Series S and a bunch of Xbox One games. Ooh, Dave's trying to use rational explanation. Ooh, they've thrown the console at him. Ooh, ooh, we'll just we'll table that one for 2022. Well, that's what they <laughs> get for trying to, you know, it's... Mm, the S doesn't have a disk drive. I'll leave the rest alone. I like Microsoft's approach to backwards compatibility. You don't care about it. We'll leave that there. We don't have to have a Dan in this conversation continually belaboring the point. It's just that they, they have backwards compatibility and that console won't do it. That's the... <laughs> yeah, because you can't exactly pop in a disc. Um, that exactly. That said, <laughs> because they do it through the marketplace, you can probably buy, like, you can probably buy Mass Effect 3 for Xbox 360 on your Series S for 15, 20 bucks, and then download that. Exactly, just as you can on your PlayStation 4, yep. your PlayStation 3, yep. and your PlayStation 5. Um, so... I feel like that'll be my reaction when I go back to play Dragon Age Origins. All right, cool. The Dragon Age 4 announcement has been made. Let's go back and play Dragon Age. Oh, my God. <laughs> turn off the mods. Turn off the mods. <laughs> oh, turn on the mods, the ones that haven't been broken in the past 10 years. So, Boater, I'm going to throw some names at you for, for our, uh, our last topic here that okay, I want to talk about. Okay, I'm going to bounce them away with the ghost because I can't catch. So, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw out some names and see if you recognize these folks. Okay. Grant Kirkhope. Is that not recognized. Okay. Gentleman who worked for Rare, worked on t uh, titles such as wrote the scores for Banjo-Kazooie, Donkey Kong 64, Goldeneye okay. 77, and Perfect Dark. 
Oh, nice. fantastic yeah. game it's scores. Got a heyday of, of Rare um, right there. Has also been involved with gaming lately with uh, the Ghostbusters rema- remake and remaster Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. You say lately, but the Ghostbusters, Ghostbusters remaster was like 10 years ago. It was 2016, actually. What? Um, no. Yes, there's a 2016 Ghostbusters game. It's quite fun. Um, so, that name doesn't necessarily ring a bell with you. How about, uh, how about, let me, let, you know what, I'll go with the, I know the name you will recognize. How about Todd McFarlane? Does that name mean anything to you? Does that? Yeah, a bit. Um, some, there's been a lot of, um, McFarlane last names. I think of, like, I think the creator of Spawn. Bingo. That's the, that's the, the okay. that's the Todd McFarlane. Creator of Spawn has worked on, for Marvel, has worked for DC, has his own to- very successful toy line that branches out into all facets of fandom. And have you heard of the name R.A. Salvatore? Yeah. R.A. So, Salvatore, absolutely. So, um... Author of, um, probably best known for the uh, Drizzt series of Forgotten Realms novels. Yes. But, uh, you know, has written Star Wars fiction, Star Trek fiction, so probably some original fiction along the way. Bunch of genre fiction. I wouldn't be surprised if we wrote Warhammer, but I don't think I've seen any. So if all three of those people were to get together on a game, would that not be a good game? I'd be interested. I'd be interested. Um, there is not enough following for games writers. I know one or two writers, not like personally, but I know of one or two writers. Rihanna Pratchett is the one that comes to mind that wrote the original Mirror's Edge, wrote the uh, uh, Tomb Raider reboot. Um, Games writers is kind of a thing that you don't pay attention to too much, unless they're also the producer and the director and the Hideo Kojima. So, this game uh, will be hitting shelves today. Uh, it is digitally available and under small distribution. No, not Horizon 2. Thank you very much, YouTube. Video will play after ad, Dave. Video will play after ad. Yep, and it doesn't mean I'm not going to touch it. Touch it. Touch the deer. This is M17. Bloody, cover your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Ghostbusters was in 2016, just how the Sonic movie was earlier this year. I'm trying to, okay, so I'm mixing that up with a different Ghostbusters video game, because I remember hearing news about one when I was working at Game Nuts. So, I know what you're thinking when you look at this game. This does not look like a game that was produced with a big budget in in the 2019-2020 yeah, era. Feels, um, well, the cell shading is one thing. Bits of it feel a little 2013-2014. I noticed it said Kingdom of Amalur. Which I don't know the background of that setting and the lore in that. I don't know how many games there have been in that setting. I don't know what the visual style is of previous games. Um, so this is actually Kingdom of Amalur re-reckoning. They have decided to take a game in 2012 that was... 2012, by all intents purposes... 2012 is the, the year that was in my head. <laughs> by all intents and purposes, an enormous flop. Um, the company, uh, 38 Studios that developed it went out of business because of this game. Oof. But our friends at THQ Nordic and Kaiko Games, the developer... I haven't, I've never heard anything bad about THQ. Continue. So, Sorry, I just, I just wanted to point out they're not on the wheel. They have decided to relaunch this game under the idea that a lot of people talk about this game, a lot of people seem to have a lot of uh, fond memories of this game, now's your chance to play it and... Uh, Kind of put your purchases where your mouth is. So, I am very excited to say that, folks, if this is a game that interests you under any circumstance, it is out today. The writing on it is very good. My roommate in college so the, would not stop talking about this game and how much fun it was. So, so they basically they, they took the game um, and the gameplay, whatever, but they basically wrote a whole new story or like took the framework of the story... And then flesh it out like really good fan fiction writers? It seems like they just took it and uh, uh, blew off the dust on it and uh, did a little bit of making sure that it was going to run smoothly on it, on the next-gen consoles, and then announced that there would be continuations of the story in the forms of (laughs) uh, DLCs that were announced originally for the PS3 and the 360 versions, um, and were released on the PS3 and 360. For the second one, it was only announced on the 360 and PC. And the third one 
did not make it to market. So, so these these writers, where do they come in then? They they didn't write the original, did they? The THQ Nordic, and then the uh, the deve- the new developer company. Um, the the writers that you threw at me, the Salvatore and McFarland. He wrote the he wrote uh, they, uh, they Kingdom of Reckoning. Okay, so like he wrote Reckoning, and then they didn't change that game. Okay. They just took the framework. Um, it, it's it's yeah, actually, this is a very bad comparison, but it's the Duke Nukem Forever story. The game was already done, and they literally just blew the dust off on it and sold it to market. Okay, so um, the the writers that you've mentioned were the ones that have wrote the original game. Yep, R.A. Salvatore okay, wrote okay. the wrote it. Uh, the for, general... for some reason, I thought that you were talking about like completely remaking the game with new writers. No, but okay, okay. Nope, Grant still Kirkhope cool. still was the composer. So then, if they brush the dust off and update the uh, game mechanics a little bit, maybe it'll get more of the uh, respect that it deserved um, for um, with those writers. So here's hoping. Uh, and that. I think does uh, bring us to the close. That, babe. unfortunately, we have run out of time for the other topics I did have, so we will table those for another time. But yeah, we'll, uh, we'll hope that uh, in order to, to match this, uh, Sony has something to say for the PlayStation. Or they're just going to be like, all the PlayStation... Oh, no, they already said that they're going to have a, uh, a system that won't play discs. Probably they're going to be like, yeah, our discless system has exactly the same specs as the one with a disc. Take that, Microsoft. But they, they could come out in the next week and say that, in which case we'll report on it. Or they won't, in which case we'll say nothing. Or make it a big hoax and try to get a rumor going. Heard it here first. So, ladies and gentlemen, you have seen it here on the Nerd Glasses. You've heard it here. But make sure to keep it tuned in here on Insane Games TV. Because just after we say au revoir to you, we will be going offline. And then, literally less than three minutes later, The Citadel will be starting... Boater, what are we playing on the Citadel today? We're going to be playing Mad Max. Last time that I played this game, I got very quiet and very angry. Um, and uh, I, we're not going to do the quiet thing today, but considering how low on sleep I am and what a bad day I've had, we're probably still going to get angry and we're probably still going to throw things. So uh, if you want to uh, see any of that as I, I struggle with... Uh, anything in the game, then make sure to stick around for the Citadel. Again, we're going to go offline for uh, two, three minutes tops as we change around a couple things and go live with another 10 minute countdown. Uh, and I'd love to see you stick around for the Citadel. If you don't, remember to still give us a follow right here because there is so many really cool programs across the entire network here at Insane Games TV. So be sure to check out all of those as well. Uh, from us, though, here at the Nerd Glasses Podcast, I've been Belder. I've been Dave, man. And we'll see you across the channel and maybe next Tuesday. Bye, everybody. Bye.